At first glance, this is not that big of a deal. Five fellas see an older dude walking down the street in St. Paul. Uh, they ask him for a ride. He says, oh, hell yeah, what could go wrong? They pile into his car. Pretty soon they're carjacking him, pistol whipping him, beating him, and robbing him. I mean, if we did a, if we did a channel on every one of these things that happened, uh, we'd have about 10 channels running 24-7. But the more we learn about this guy, the more we learn about some of the details of the attack, the more we learn about his reaction to his own attack, that's when this story goes from ordinary violence to black mob violence with, with a heaping dose of denial, deceit, and delusion that does nothing but make it worse, worse, and worse. The story begins out there in twin, the twin, famous twin city of St. Paul, Minnesota, with a guy named, uh, what's his name, Michael T. Mikal Rambo. Apparently he's a playwright, a member of the theater community in St. Paul of some note. Anyway, so uh, he's, he, he had just left something called, I think, the Rambo, Rando, Rondo Days Festival in St. Paul. This is a festival dedicated to African Americans in St. Paul. We ought to have a bell go off in the story for every time they mention or refer to some kind of cult, uh, artifact of African American life, culture, whatever. So anyway, he's going to this, uh, went, goes to this big thing, walks around, he's the big kahuna. Everybody says, hey, what's up, man? I really like your plays. We really like the way you put it to the white people in your plays. He goes, yeah, yeah, what can I do? It's easy, easy work. So, uh, anyway, that's when the five fellas come up to him and they go, hey, Unc, can you give us a ride to the train, the, the tra you know, the trolley station? When he gets there, they go, oh, no, could you take us somewhere else? That's when the beating, that's when the robbery, that's when the threats, they put a gun to his head, stole his stuff, clonked him over the head, put him in the hospital. That's when that all happened. But when it comes time to describing the, um, the, the fellas involved in this, there were just five, they're five young men between the ages of 14 and 18. Here's another reference to the African-American neighborhood that was severed by the construction of Interstate 94. So that's not only a reference to the African-American neighborhood, it's also a reference to how somehow because we built a freeway through this ghetto, that destroyed the ghetto. A common theme that's told throughout the country, and it's a common excuse for the ridiculous level of dysfunction, violence, mayhem, and chaos in black neighborhoods. Oh, I'm sorry, African American neighborhoods. So they're going to give us some details about the attack, blah, 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 blah. And have we heard this before? Many, many times. Guns, beatings, stole the car, blah, blah, blah. Anybody surprised? Does anybody come up and go, wow, this doesn't really happen in St. Paul? No, it happens in St. Paul all the time. And when you ask, if you call the St. Paul Police Department and you say, this is, how, this is what I used to have to do when I first started out, before people started who knew what was going on started sending me these stories. I'd have to call up and say, uh, hey, um, can you tell me the racial identity of the people who clunked that dude over the head? And St. Paul and Minneapolis were probably the two worst ones for claiming they don't notice the color of crime. They don't pay attention to that. How could I ever ask anything like that? I'm a bad person for asking. But of course, if you go to their website, you could see this is one of the most racially conscious cities in America. It's all about affirmative action. It's all about black people being hired in, 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 in St. Paul and in Minneapolis. It's all about when they take the test to get a civil service job, reducing the scores, getting help, extending the time. They're very proud of this. Nobody's hiding this. They're very, very proud of that in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Okay, here we, so here we go. Okay, so, you know, what we just heard 
Is what we just heard worthy enough to bring this to attention of a national audience? Not really. But now, but now let's look at let's look at this. Let's pick up the victim. Learn a little bit more about him and his reaction to this story. Rambo, his name is that's the art that's the theater guy's name. The victim, Rambo expressed no anger towards the carjackers. I'm saddened that there are so many who are lost and looking for a way out. On Saturday, he'll celebrate his birthday. While the incident has caused him to miss work, including the reading of his new play, he hopes to get clearance from his doctor to resume work soon. And he, everybody, then he talked about all his neighbors are coming over and saying they're commiserating with him and all this stuff. Here's the weird thing about all the people that are commiserating with him as we're going to kind of learn more about him. They'll come over and say, oh, that's really terrible. Those five guys, those five black people beat the hell out of you and did all they almost killed you. But in St. Paul and Minnesota, if you go, yeah, well, we're going to, when we catch these five guys, what should we do with them? The same people commiserating with this guy for having his head split open, they're going to be the first in line to say, well, we got to just pat him on the head and send him on the way for reasons that we will find out in a second. In the meantime, this dude is savoring the outpouring of support from the community. A neighbor stopped by during the interview to ask after his health. Rambo has taken a philosophical approach to the incident, invoking Martin, invoking Martin Luther King Jr., who dreamed of creating a beloved community. Another black reference. Hmm. They got re references to everything black in this dude's life except for the people who beat the piss out of him and tried to kill him. Oh, by the way, when the story start, opened up, there was a, you know, they're doing the description of what's going on in his house. His house is filled with African artifacts, all this fake African-American culture stuff that nobody knows enough. Nobody is, either has the brains or the guts to challenge. Okay, let's get back to Mr. Rambo. The attack was disheartening, but I'm not discouraged, said Rambo, whose longtime passion is helping young people through mentorships, teaching, and performance, including a juvenile offender program offered by the county. So this dude has dedicated his whole life to the cause. That's his life. He's down with the cause. And now he just figured out the cause is not down with him. Instead of reevaluating his entire life, his entire way of thinking, his entire lifestyle, his entire fake African-American culture business, he's doubling down on it. Quote, this is actually a pretty good one because it, uh, it shows a lot of creativity for a new excuse. We don't even hear this one that much. Our children with technology are leading, are living very isolated lives. Uh, I don't think this guy has any kids. Anyway, and they're seeing that people in high places, people who have power, don't reap consequences for their behavior. Well, that's a good one. But the more people are able to connect to each other to create community, the more we can see others and have some empathy. Then we will all be better off. How about an alternative explanation from good old Colin? The more you excuse this kind of ridiculous level of black criminality, violence, and attempted murder, the more you excuse it, the more it's going to keep happening. How's that sound? You fool. Put that in your next play. Let's have a play about a playwright who's living in this bubble. The bubble gets popped, and he just keeps living in the bubble as if the bubble is still intact. I've got a better idea. Why don't we go out to Indianapolis very briefly? Just to, there's a writer in Indianapolis. He gives an alternative explanation for this kind of black misbehavior, mayhem, chaos, and all the denial, deceit, and delusion surrounding it. This is an older dude. He's a lawyer. He writes for. A, 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 he has a talk radio show. He's a person of some note in Indianapolis. He's a black lawyer. Quote. Indianapolis, you have a problem. Your problem is young black men who are out of control, unquote. That's from Abdul Hakim Shabazz. So you get to choose. 
You get. I, I don't know that Mr. Uh, Abdul Hakim Shabazz, by the way, is down with. You know, if somebody clunks you over the head, putting them in jail. I don't know if he's actually down with that. I suspect that he is, but I do not know for sure. So we get to choose between Rambo and Shabazz. One wants to us to understand these ridiculously dangerous young black people who are trying to kill people. And another one is saying, hey, I don't know what you've been smoking, but you better figure out your real problem as young black men who are out of control. But just the other day, I'm surprised at how many, how many times people ask me this, surprised how many times I answer it. I'm surprised at how many times people go, no, Colin, really, what, what, I mean, what's the answer? So somebody goes, Colin, what's the solution? I said, listen, you think real hard what the solution is when somebody comes up and clunks you on the head. You think about it and let me know what y your solution is. And it was too hard of a question. So I think he thought I was inviting him to make up some new Rube Goldberg 1,000 step plan, cost a billion dollars, been tried a billion times and has failed a billion times. No, if you walk around Indianapolis or St. Paul clonking people over the head, stealing their car, putting them in the hospital, why is it so hard to figure out what the solution is for that? Unless you're mentally insane and you think that the people who are the victims are really the perpetrators and you think the perpetrators are really some kind of victims. If somebody does violence on you, we can expect them to go to prison, period. Why is that such an, why do so many people have trouble figuring that out? Oh, Colin, we cannot arrest our way out of this mess. I don't, listen, of course we can. The only people who say that are the people who think that somehow the people getting beat somehow can recover from it, they deserve it, and the young people doing the beating are innocent little angels caught up in the wrong time and the wrong place. People who think that, on any level, at any time, you are 100% idiot idiots. And so if you're looking at these five guys here that tried to kill Mr. Rambo, if at any time during the cycle from sentence, from from, from arresting them, to trying them, to convincing them, convicting them, to sentencing them to prison. If at any time during the cycle you look at any one of those guys and go, well, I don't know, Colin. You know, we're going to ruin them for the rest of his life by putting him in the system. Can't we just pat him on the head and make him promise not to do it again? If any time you find yourself or your friends Anybody you know, your neighbors, I heard it from one of my neighbors the other night after she was trying to convince me how tough she was on crime, when in fact she gave me the mentally insane answer. If at any time you hear that, you should check yourself into the closest, closest mental health facility where they lock you up for three days and fill you full of drugs because you are a danger to yourself and to others because you're just, too, you're just not smart enough to figure something out because you think it will make the black kids angry.